Hey guys, Brendan in Productions here, and welcome to another installment of How to Make Snake in Java. Now, I was originally actually going to end these tutorials after my last part. However, I um I got some comments regarding a few things, especially regarding the double buffering uh, implementation that was set up in part six. Now, although it seems to work on my end and everything is actually working pretty fine, I got tons of comments saying that the double buffering actually made the flashing worse. So, as, as I could not tell because it fixed things on my end, I'm guessing that this may be um, just a problem with other computers. So, I'm guessing that the solution I implemented is something that does not work on all computers. Um, or maybe on, it only works on higher end computers. But, so what I came here today to do is actually implement a better double buffering system and then add, of course, a high score, because what's snake if you can't beat somebody's score? Um, so let's go ahead and start with this now. So the first thing we're going to do is actually analyze our current code. So, so far, um, as you probably noticed from this class, everything is really, really messy. But you know, that's okay, because um, <laughs> it's a snake tutorial, and it was coded in six parts, and we didn't really think about it. It was all coded on the spot, so that's okay. But what we have here is we've got a paint method that simply sets that sets the size. Um, it um, it creates a new linked list of points. It generates the default snake. It places the fruit, and um, it creates global graphics. So the reason that this paint method is kind of unorthodox is because usually what you're supposed to do is everything that you draw is supposed to actually go within the paint method. So what we have currently is we have it so. Uh, everything that we need to draw is in the draw method. Well, the way that it should be is everything that we need to draw is in the paint method, and then all of the external rendering is done in the update method. Now, how Java actually does painting is there's the two methods, update and paint. The paint method is actually what draws stuff onto the screen. Now, the update method, which we haven't overrided in this class, is actually called before the paint method, and actually contains things about um, actually rendering the screen, like clearing the screen and stuff like that. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is implement a more or orthodox version of drawing by um, switching over all of our drawing to the paint method and then adding an update method. So the first thing we're actually going to do is add an update method. So we're going to say public void update and this is going to take graphics G. Now this is the default um, update method uh, which will contain our double buffering. Whoops. So we're going to go ahead and get started right away. So we're going to ignore all of the code we have right here, and we're just going to get started with a brand new piece of double buffering. So the first thing we need to do is create graphics that are going to be uh, if you recall from the previous tutorials, double buffering is basically painting off the screen and then flipping it onto the screen when all the painting is done. So what we're going to do is we're first going to create graphics that allow us to paint off the screen. So we're going to say graphics, off screen graphics. So these are the graphics uh, we will use to draw off screen. Now the next thing we need to do is create a new image that will actually contain um, contain the information that we actually paint off the screen. So we're going to say buffered image equals, oh my bad, we need to name it. Um, we're going to call it off screen uh, because we're painting off the screen. And we're just going to say it equals null. So right now we're just kind of setting up our variables. And the next thing we need to do is grab the size of our applet. So we're just going to say dimension d equals this dot get size. Um, so now we've got the three variables that we're going to need to actually create a, a, a new double buffering method. So as you can see here, we have an error because off screen isn't actually used. So let's go ahead and use it a little bit. So we're going to say off screen equals new buffered image. So what we need to do is we need to turn this into a new blank white canvas that actually uh, will allow us to um, to paint onto it. And then for the, um, it's going to take a few parameters, width, height, and a, a color type. So for the width, we're just going to get the dimension D uh, width. So we're going to say D.width, which is the variable that we saved previously, which is essentially just the width of the applet. 
And then for the height, we're going to do d dot height, which is the height of the applet. And then for the color type, um, it's actually called image type, we're going to do buffered image dot uh, type underscore, and we're going to press control space to bring up this little suggestions menu. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to find type underscore int underscore ARGB. Now what this is, is it's essentially something or a type of buffered image that supports the RGB color system and alpha transparency. So this allows us to paint transparent images onto the screen and anything that's red, green, or blue or made up with that color combination. Now this is essentially every little um, piece of artwork that we're going to be creating for this game. Um, so this will serve our purposes nicely. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually declare what our off-screen graphics are. So we're going to say off-screen graphics equals off-screen, which if you recall is our canvas off the screen. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the the uh, graphics that are actually used for that off-screen canvas um, so we can actually paint stuff onto it. So grabbing the graphics is sort of like um, taking the paintbrush that's only specific to that canvas. And we're going to just go ahead and grab that so we can utilize it to paint stuff onto the screen. So we're going to say offscreen.getGraphics. Then the next thing we need to do is we actually need to set the color of the offscreen graphics. So this is something that I actually didn't know about in the, um, in the previous tutorials. There is actually a method on um, applets or canvases that allows us to get the background and foreground colors. So we're just going to go ahead and set the color to this dot get background. So this is actually the color that is that is naturally painted on the screen before anything else is. So this should be white in in most circumstances. However, this is nice because we can actually get the background and we don't have to guess upon what color it is. So if if some system actually mucks up the white a little bit, it won't look funny because our our system or our game won't be drawing white on something that's not supposed to be white. So now that we actually have set the background, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to clear the entire off-screen um, off-screen canvas, and that can be done by simply drawing <laughs> the background on top of everything, which seems kind of ghetto, but that is what we must do. So we're just going to say off-screen graphics uh, dot fill rect. And we're going to fill it um, from the point 0, 0, which is in the top left. And we're going to fill it for the D dot width and D dot height, which is the entire actual applet. Now, since we're getting the background color and we're setting that as the color, we won't actually notice any drawing. It'll just look like our foreground drawing actually got deleted. So now that we've drawn the background color on top of everything, now we can just say off screen graphics dot set color get foreground now or rather my bad this dot get foreground now get foreground is simply um, the color that we're using to paint everything else so in this case it's going to be black and by default it is black um, and so this get foreground color will end up drawing our grid so then the next thing we need to do is we need to actually put everything uh, everything that's inside of our draw method we need to draw all of the components of the game onto this off-screen canvas that we're utilizing. So it's very similar to the um, double buffering method that we tried to set up last tutorial that didn't end up working out the way we wanted it to. So now in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to throw the paint method here. Because by default, the update method calls the paint method. However, since we're overriding the update method, we're going to also need to manually call the paint method. Now instead of painting to um, the global graphics, what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to paint to the off-screen graphics. So we're going to paint, and then it's going to accept graphics G as a parameter, of course. So we're just going to throw in off-screen graphics. So once that's done, we should have a canvas off the screen that has all of our components painted onto it. And now what we need to do is we need to flip that canvas onto our screen. And this can be done by taking our graphics, the graphics for the program, and saying g.drawImage. And so what we're drawing is the image that's off the screen, and we're drawing it on our screen. So the image is the off screen. Yes, it's just called off screen. That's the image that we're using. And we're going to paint it at 0, 0. And those are all of the actual, um, whoops all of the parameters we need. It doesn't matter about anything else. We're just going to put it at 0, 0. And then it's going to ask for an image observer. And we're just going to say this. 
it's its own image observer. I honestly don't know what image observers do, but um, usually you just need to say that the image observer is the thing that you're actually painting on. So now we have an update method that actually implements double buffering. So we don't need to worry about actually uh, implementing double buffering in our paint or draw methods. But as you can see here, the update method actually calls the paint method, which um, can be problematic because our paint method is not set up to be called every so often. So what we need to do is actually read it so this is the case. So let's go ahead and analyze our paint method line by line. So first of all, we set this dot preferred size um, to a new dimension. Now this is not a problem whatsoever. Um, if if we need to set the size, we set the size. Now this part right here, we say snake equals new link list of points. Now if the paint method is called um, every so often, then the snake is constantly going to be reset. So what we need to do is we actually need to add an if statement before this to make sure that the snake actually needs to be reset. So if we say if snake um, is null, then we can go ahead and reset it. This will allow us to only reset the snake when it doesn't exist. Um, and then the generate default snake method, this is also paired with the if snake is null. So we're just going to go ahead and open curly brackets to start a new if block. So if the snake is null, essentially if the snake variable is nothing, then we're going to say that the snake equals the new link list, and then we're just going to go ahead and generate the default snake. Now the paint method also contains the place fruit method, which is what we need to do in the very beginning of the game. So if the snake is null, that essentially means the game is starting. And we're just going to go ahead and put the place fruit method in there as well. Now global graphics equals g.create. Now I don't actually remember where we used global graphics, so I'm just going to comment it out and see where the errors pop up. So we use it here in the paint method, and we also use it here in the draw method. So what we can actually do is we can actually go ahead and get rid of global graphics because we don't actually need it since we're not going to be using the draw method anymore. So we can go ahead and just delete this entire line. And then since we deleted global graphics, we don't need to actually worry about declaring the variable. And now we're also saying this dot add key listener this. Now once again, this is something that only needs to be done um, when the actual game starts up and in theory, it should be done in the init method. Init method. So I'm actually going to do that. We're going to add a public void init method. And this is something that is only going to be run when the program starts. So I'm just going to pop this dot add key listener into the init method, which should work. And then in the end of the paint method, we have if run thread is null, then we create a new thread. Now this shouldn't be a problem because we're checking if the thread is null first. So the next thing we need to do is actually put our draw stuff into our paint method. So we're going to go ahead and take our draw method and go ahead and analyze it. Um, and we only now keep in mind that we just updated our update method or created an update method that takes care of all the double buffering for us. So in our draw method, we can go ahead and delete everything that contains um, the double buffering. So we can go ahead and delete this g.clearrect um, and the buffered image junk here and we can delete this flip here. So the main thing we have here is the draw fruit, draw grid, draw snake, and draw score in that order. So we're just going to go ahead and cut that uh, using control X and then I'm going to go ahead and delete the draw method. So everything that was once in the draw method we are now going to move into the end of the paint method. Now it's going to throw us an error because buffer graphics doesn't exist. Well what we're going to do is we're actually just going to send this G as a graphics to paint to. And since we set up the update method, so when, um, so when the paint method was called, it automatically draws to the off-screen graphics. We don't need to worry about actually doing anything with the double buffering inside of the paint method. So now that we've deleted our draw method and set up our paint method accordingly, now all we need to do is fix the various errors that we may have. And we've got one right here, mainly with this statement right here. Draw with the global graphics. Well. There are two problems with this statement. One, there's global graphics present, which does not actually exist anymore. And two, we're calling the draw method, which doesn't exist anymore. So in order to replace this, we're going to use the default Java functionality of repaint. What this does is it simply calls the update and paint method once again. 
So there's nothing really to worry about anymore because we have a draw method that works but is gone. And then we put all of our double buffering into our update method, and now all of our drawing is in the paint method. Now this is actually the classic definition of an applet. This is what you're supposed to do and what I've been avoiding in most of my tutorials. So now you know this is how the applet is actually supposed to work. So now we can go ahead and test it out by running our canvas. And as you can see, everything is drawing properly. And if we press the down arrow, um, nothing actually works. <laughs> well, that's pesky. I believe that the problem with this is because the this.addKeyListener is not working ever since we move it into the init method. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop this back into the paint method and see if that does anything. And that did seem to alleviate the problem, so we're just going to go ahead and leave that in the paint method. Now as you can see here on my screen as well, um, there is no flashing whatsoever. This was the way it was before, and so there's not really a way for me to tell if this fixed anything. However, I believe that this alternative method of double buffering, since it is more conventional to the default Java programming language and how Java applets are supposed to be worked, um, this should end up working for any of you that were having problems with intense flashing. Now, the people that were having problems reported that the whole um, grid was actually flashing black. Like when you were clearing the screen um, and erasing things, the whole thing flashed black. Now, that probably should be resolved because we use the get background color method um, to actually clear our screen. So this should fix any problems you guys are having with double buffering. Now, I didn't expect this part of the tutorial to take 16 minutes, so I'm going to end it here. And in the next tutorial, I'm actually going to discuss how to create high score files locally. So we're going to write and read to a high score file in order to keep track of the high score. We're also going to have it set up so it gets the user's name. Um, so any user that's actually playing the game can get a high score. Yada yada. So... As usual, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Sorry for the late turnaround time on this tutorial. I've just been busy um, playing League of Legends, honestly. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to talk to you guys later, and have a great day. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe. And um, yeah, all right, see you guys soon. Peace.